Thanks, guys. I'm standing here with Coach Eric of the Palmdale South team. Coach, you guys are down on the half. What are you going to do to get the momentum swinging in your direction? We seem to have some open spaces there. We just need to get that running back going. And uh, on the outside, we just need to block. So what's been your biggest obstacle from the first half of the game? Well, the too many mistakes. Uh, we fumbled, we're dropping snaps, and, uh, you know, that fumble on that big play was uh, killer. Now you have a cast of amazing all-star players. What was it like coaching them in such a short amount of time to success? Uh, it was such a pleasure. These kids are so smart. Uh, you put them in there and they learn the plays in one try, but it's been a pure joy coaching athletes this good. Do you think we'll see some of these boys playing on a Sunday in the future? Uh, there's a couple of them that are pretty special. I mean, they're at top of their game and they're best at, at this age in the state, so maybe. So what's it like for you leading this cast of all-star coaches on this day? Uh, it's great. You know, all these guys know what they're doing, and uh, it's nice to turn the defense over to the coaches and have full confidence in them. All right, well, best of luck in the second half. All right, thank you. I'm standing here with Coach Jerome with the Palmdale North team. Coach, you guys are up at the half. How are you going to keep the momentum going in the second? Well, in the second, um, we got everybody rotated in, so now we're about to just start pounding the ball down the field. Momentum, uh, we got a good, good group of guys, so momentum is not a problem. So. I saw you guys recovered a fumble in the second quarter. How do you guys coach these players to maximize on these opportunities? Well, you got good coaches all around in the PYFL, exactly. So things like this at this level, when you get to all-stars, things like that, just make, kids just make coaches look good. You mentioned an all-star cast of coaches, and that's right. What does it feel to lead all of these coaches as the head coach? Um, it's kind of humbling because you got coaches that are no more than you, than you are no more than them. So long as you ain't got an ego problem, I mean, that's, that's the main thing of a head coach. If you ain't got an ego problem, it's easy to do. You talk about an ego problem. What was it like, like corralling all of these all-star players and getting all the talent in one team and coaching them in such a short amount of time? Um, it, it was kind of easy because at this level, like I said, with the kids and their how, how much how long they've been playing football and everything like that, they pretty much know everything. So if you tell them you want a 4-4 defense, they know how to get in it already. So putting the defense in and putting the quick offense in to get going real fast, it's not a problem. And do you think we'll end up seeing some of these boys play on a Sunday in the future? Oh, of course so. I believe so. You know what I mean? PYFL, you know what I mean? They send a lot of kids to D1 college, and once you get to college, it's just your hard work and effort after that. Well, they couldn't do without you. Best of luck in the second. Getting set for the second half here, the North receiving with a 6 nothing lead over the South in our 10-year-old bantamweight game. Thompson scooping it up. DeLon very dangerous. Runs hard, gives his North team excellent field position outside the 45. Of course, DeLon Thompson plays for Newberry Park Black, 4'9 and 100 pounds. And we mentioned it, and it bears repeating, he is a threat to score every time he touches. So the ball will be placed at the 47-yard line. We'll see what the North can do. The wind is gusting today here in Palmdale, California. We're at Palmdale High School, home of the Falcons. It's rich tradition here. Beautiful so, facility. Dee, wherever you are, I know you hear me talking, girl. You need to come in here. Come to the booth right now. See if the chains are set. They're still working with that on the sideline. And we're ready for action. We'll just push the pile forward for a couple yards. You know, you know what's so funny? I love watching these kids run on and off the field. That's a long run for them. <laughs> That's like over 50 yards. Yeah, they don't cover as much ground at this age. That's a thousand steps for them. Just getting to the far side of the field and back. That's like a thousand calories burnt. Don't you wish you could run off a thousand calories that quick? Oh, yes, I do wish I could. It's like that commercial. College, take me with you. Sherrard is the quarterback. Isaiah Sherrard had a beautiful run in the first half. This is Thompson. Again, he's cat quick to the outside, breaking tackles. It's a nice job by DeLon Thompson. He's to the 45-yard line of the South. Close to a first down for the north side. That's DeLon Thompson. Bigot with the stop. Bigot, and it also looked like Dante Russell from the Burbank Blanco, the Burbank Black over there on the wide side of the field. 
making the tackle. Third down and two to go for the North. 90 seconds into this third quarter. Houston Brown had to hustle off the field, number 55. He sprinted to the near sideline for the South on defense. Just a simple dive play. Don't know that they got enough for the first down. It's going to be very close. Rushing the football was uh, Khalil Pert, who's been so great on defense. It will bring up a fourth down. About a half a yard to go. Yeah, it looks like on the south side, five guys went off. Here he comes. The five guys went on, five guys came off as they rotate their defense to get in. Fourth down and one. Look to go right up the middle, that same play we just saw, the inside trap. Well, Sherrard is piloting the team, and he's a capable runner, and they do dive right up the middle. That's going to be first down yardage. Good push up front by the yeah, offensive line. Movement. First down north. They made it easily down inside the 40-yard line with the football, the very capable running back for the Northern Stars. It was Alex Bunker who carried. First down, 39-yard line. Yeah, the North trying to build on their advantage. Pitch back to Villa. And Villa with a nice effort. Anthony Villa. He's come in, and he has given North a really nice running back, giving him a nice lift, but I guess you shouldn't be too surprised. These are all All-Stars. Ball was carried by number 11, Anthony Villa. Villa picked up nine. Second down and just one to go here. They're close to the 30-yard line. North, North has come out, and Troy, they got a nice drive. Yeah, one of the good things about Shout these 10-years-old, the as we say, uh, they run line. the ball, Probably and it helps to run the clock. Here. So it looks like if you're not going to get a lot of opportunities, you better take advantage of them. Jonathan Vasquez, who threw the touchdown as quarterback in the team. Quick handoff. Good for the first down. I think that was number 25, Jamin Wright from Newberry Park Houston Black. Brown of the Lancaster Jets made that tackle. First down, quite a march by the North. There's a mix-up in the backfield, and that mix-up was because of great penetration. Coming through was Kip Collis, the defensive tackle from the West Valley Rebels. Well, he, Kip is uh, anchored their defensive Looks line like all season long Kip for West Collis Valley Rebels. Valley. Normally demands double teams, and he just shot in there. And that Second that's down. proof as to why he deserves and double teams as you saw the penetration he almost got the trifecta cause fumble pick scoop and score good job getting the ball back well peter Covarubius, one of those offensive linemen on the north side clapping his hand saying we're going to block you the next time love the fact that he was enthusiastic even though Collis was able to break through. Kip Collis will make a big play. Second down and 14. Deep pitch. Running with the football is Williams. Saw Ron Williams. And he's a flyer. We hadn't seen him run the ball in the first half, but we knew coming in he was dangerous. Yeah, Sharon had 12 touchdowns during the season. Right, so Highly Sharon explosive athlete. I think they should try that same play again. Dante Russell. So look for Sharon Chris Williams. Espinoza. It's going to be a focal point of the offense here in the second half of the ball game. Third down, seven. Williams wears number 19. He's the deep running back. So they give the first back through, and it wasn't Williams. It was number 20. That's Khalil Pert. And he's been busy. Pert's very good both offensively and defensively. Yeah, he's, he's a low, like we said, we were calling him J.J. Watt on defense, and he looks like J.J. Watt on offense. J.J. Watt scored a touchdown recently, didn't he? I think he has four touchdowns this year. 
Ty, Malik, and Ross on the south side. Fourth down and two. Go get them, P-Y-F. Hit somebody. 640 to play in the third quarter. Again, they give it off on the dive play, and this is going to be close. Good surge by the south, but it looks to be a first down and is. As once again, Khalil Pert put his head down despite the great effort by Austin Jane to stop him. He got the first down yardage. Yeah, this is a nice, slow drive where they're eating up yards. And it's funny. I think every every series of downs, they at least get the fourth, <laughs> fourth and short. That's frustrating for a defense. Well, another score here would be huge for the North. Leading 6 nothing. Play fake. That's directed out into the flat and caught. Reeled in by Dylan Burrett, the tight end. Burrett with a great effort. Nice execution on the rollout by Vasquez. Dylan rolls to Burrett. rolls to his right. Hits Dylan Burrett wide open. Of the south side one yard away from a score. Five, six, and 125 pounds, and Burrett carried three, perhaps four of the blue shirts downfield. First and goal at the one. And there's your dive for the touchdown. That was a brilliant drive by the North. Taking it in was number 29, Elijah Owens. So Elijah Owens with the score, and it's 12-0. So we got a touchdown for the North. Right up the middle dive, Elijah Owens. I think I said What's jamming right earlier, but it was Elijah Owens on the touchdown. One yard right up the middle. Let's see if someone in these first two games can get the extra point. We haven't seen one of those made today, have we? Again, they try that dive with number 20. He's going to be stalled. That's Khalil Pert. was no good. 540 left in the third. They do score the, the score. touchdown. North side, 12. South side, zero. It's 12 nothing. to North leads with 540 left. Third quarter. Our Bantam Division All-Star Affair. Tremendous coverage by the Northern Stars. And getting downfield was DeLon Thompson. You'll love it. And we've carved out him as a great running back, but you'll love to see his enthusiasm on the kickoff team. Yeah, when you're at this age, you got to play all positions. But every once in a while, there's a kid that stands out, and DeLon Thompson is doing it for us today. It has been tough for the South to move against that North defense, which has been great. Larry Avila on that defensive line has made a lot of stops. Number 34. Coming around and carrying the football is Dante Russell. That's a better effort. That's a nice gain on first Number down. Four, Russell, Russell takes it out to the 40-yard line. Pick up a five. Dante Russell, great speed. Tough to keep him in jail all game long. Russell, so fleet of foot. Jerry Giles, number five in that backfield, and he showed some great moves in that first half. Another one on the ground for Stuthers. And he uh, got popped there a little bit in the late flag. Yeah, his knee was on the ground. He obviously didn't do it on purpose, but you got to call that flag. In the pros, that might have been okay. And even then, the knee on the ground, when you holding the ball, they're going to call that usually 10 out of 10 times. That's really a break for the South. That would have been really against it. And now they get a first down. That'll take the ball out to the midfield stripe. And when you're down 12 nothing, you need things to happen. It's tough to score in this division, bantamweight division. Only 10-year-olds, these kids. Still uh, only 4.43 left in the third quarter. So that's a huge 
break for the South. Of course, it was unintentional. Tough to stop your momentum going forward like that. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, it's been tough sledding for the uh, the South, and to get 15 yards in one play, and it should be an automatic first down, even though the yard marker says third down. Well, that's why we have a stoppage now. The, the yard marker, the chain gang's having a difficult time getting things lined up and getting the right down marker. And I think it's uh, starting to get uh, to Amos Wellington, our referee. But the the funny thing is the guy that has a yard marker is a referee. He should be the one guy that knows. If this is not apparent, here you go. He's got it right. Giles. Nothing there. Again, this north defense, so good. At the time it was right, the defensive end that jammed up the play. Second down and 11, loss of one. Well, Khalid Barajas and Larry Avila, those are two big kids. You can see the size difference right there. This is going to be tough sledding. And going against the win, the south needs to get to the fourth quarter where they can actually try to pass the ball to give themselves some relief of this, going against this big front that the north has. Well, the north in control of the football game, up 12 nothing, but the south... Good spot on the field at their 49-yard line. Fake to Russell. They give it to Giles, and again, great defense. All game long, the defense has been splendid. Kaleeb Barajas from Ventura Black. Yeah, Caleb Barajas, Ventura Black, 5'3", 130 pounds, got into the backfield and caused an explosion. What a play by Barajas. A physical performer on that front. Defensive tackle. And when you don't have to send players and you can whip them up front with that defensive front four, things are good. Well, just looking at the size of the north, they just look bigger than the, the team from the south. And you know, as you know, it's all about the line play. Third down and 15. It's a better effort there and a nice run. Exploding forward was Dante Russell to midfield. That'll bring up fourth down and 10. But Russell really got to the point of attack in a hurry. Fourth down and 10. They're going for it here. Down by a dozen. They had movement. Now it's fourth and 15. On the south side. Yeah, fourth and 10. Now it's going to be fourth and 15, as you just said. Tough sledding going into the win, going against a bigger line. I mean, just look across, look at 34, 16, 56. They look like they're a great older. Yeah, 34, that's Avila. And he did, I mentioned it prior. He looks like he should be playing for the, the Trojans or the Bruins. Here is that fourth down call and short run for Russell. And that'll uh, bring in the offense of the North. Ball goes over on downs with 2.17 left, and that North defense should get a, a curtain call. They've been brilliant today here at Palmdale High School. Yeah, this North team uh, has been all over the oh, field. Good the job by the South to stay in there, with a shout out. to stay in this game. What they need here is a turnover so somehow, I, I some got way. A shout out, a happy birthday to... Grandpa Ernie. Well, it's going to be tough for the South to come On back down three, 12. Now it's mandatory that they get a defensive Ernie, okay? stop. They can ill afford One, to give up another two, touchdown. Uh, I'm behind you a thousand percent on that. If they give out, give up another oh, touchdown no. at this juncture of the game, it could be like the UCLA Stanford game yesterday. Yeah. Over in the third quarter. Oh, you're going to pound that one all day long. Of course, again. Uh, Toy played, performed well brilliantly, in fact, for the, the Cardinals. Speaking of brilliant, number 11's an outstanding player. That's Villa. Anthony Villa with the carry. Picks up three, second down and seven. And this clock's expiring quickly here in the third quarter. Back to 90 seconds. Left in the third stanza. North not in really much of a hurry here with a 12-0 lead. 
things are very good. Viha in the backfield. He's joined by Elijah Owens, number 29, who scored that touchdown. And they wanted to get it to Owens. Ball was on the ground. Eric Garvin, the quarterback, couldn't get it to Owens. They turn it over in the south. Make something happen. They had to stop him, and they did. As we just said, they need a turnover. The football gods rewarded them. Now they got to take advantage of this opportunity and drive down the field. And really what you want to do is try to get a first down or two, have the clock change over in the start of the fourth quarter. You're heading with the win. Well, let's see if they can manufacture something offensively. This is where it's been tough for the South. 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Still struggling with personnel. And they have to call a timeout. We'll take the timeout with them. 42 seconds left in the third quarter. 12-0 for the North. First and 10, South takes over Shout out to after recovering the fumble. Somebody over. There's a good run. That's well done. And the pile continues to move. That was a great run. Pickup of eight. Eugene Brown is the one piloting the team. Now he's the quarterback. He's the one that ran it. And there goes Brown again. He's got a first down. Breaking tackles. Brown has a first down to the 43-yard line. So a different wrinkle here. Yeah, it looks like they might have found something with this Tajine Brown who's coming out right now. I would have kept him back in there. I mean, he just got two first downs or one first down. Tajine Brown, got to use him. Brown comes out. He's replaced by Zach Stuthers. That's the end of three quarters here. And it's the North 12 of the South nothing. The fourth quarter is next in just a moment. We begin the fourth quarter at Palmdale High School, our bantamweight game, PYFL. South with the ball. They have a first down. They're down 12 nothing here, so they got to get it going. It's paramount that they would score on this drive. If they do, it'll make it a mighty interesting fourth quarter. If they don't, well, the North would figure to be in very good shape. Second down for the south side. Stuther is still in at quarterback. He was relieved by Brown for a moment. Now they're working the middle. Luke Rogers has checked in. He's carried it the last couple times. With that last carry. Known as the hammer. Say he's unstoppable. Had no fumbles all season, Luke Rogers. You love a guy to be that reliable at 10 years of age. At any age, really. At any age, you'll, you'll take that. A we physical runner, the, the way he runs. Oh, looks like we have a player down on the field. One of the North defenders is being attended to. It'll be third down when we come back with 11:24 left in this football game. 12 nothing for the North. Great to see that Tyler Dagan walked off under his own power, and perhaps he'll return for the North on defense. You hold your breath when you see a young guy on the field like that when he goes down. Yeah, you know, because interesting, you know, with all the padding they have, it's not like they're generating a lot of mass force. But glad to see that he got up and walked off the field. Luke Rogers is the, the deep back. And it'll be a quarterback keep. It's going to bring up fourth down. Well, Brown has come in and given them a little bit of a running game from the quarterback position. He wears number six. And he's a very good quarterback. He's going to come back out, and Stothers comes right back in, in tandem with Dante Russell. Yeah, I like the little Tajon, Tajin Brown. I think I'd like to see, see him try to get to the edge. I got a shout out to him. Here's a big Ellis. fourth down play. Fourth down and four. Hard. Well, let's see if Stuthers can come up with a big play. Number 25, the quarterback of the South. 
That's a good throw by Stuthers. Going to come up about a yard short of the first down. Good reception. Reeled in by Luke Rogers. But he's about a yard shy of the first down, and the ball goes over on downs, and the North has held again. Yeah, nice tackle by Kenner. Kenner Dickey of the Gore Chargers, 4'8", 90 pounds, multiple interceptions and pass breakups. But even more importantly, that was a nice tackle on a bigger kid and preventing him from the first down, turns it over. The North now has the ball. Good job, Kenner Dickey. Dickey's a kid that was injured uh, much of the season, and it's just great to see him return and play well. Got to be thrilling for him and his family that he's back and he gets an opportunity to overcome the injury and perform in this All-Star game. On first down, North will work the clock. That's Williams, Saran Williams, number 19, heralded running back. Yeah, Yeah, Saran Williams, over 12 TDs, as I said earlier. You saw the little Marcus Allen spin move in the hole, three yards. I think it's second down. It is second down. Again, they're struggling on the down marker on the far side. (laughs) <laughs> we got a job for it if you want it to. I think I'd rather I think I'd rather stay up here with you. <laughs> I think a lot of people after I had tuna fish would rather be over there on the down end distance. Uh-oh. Williams, he retreated, but look at that speed to get to the perimeter, turn the corner, and what would have been a loss is a gain of five. That's why they love Williams. Yeah, and even more impressive than that was you do see. Dante Russell with a Burbank black chase him down, sideline to sideline, but good job getting to the, you know, what was going to be a loss, turning that into positive yards, leaving it third, and looks like two. Third down. Ball resting at the 43-yard line for the North. And they've been the better team today. They've, the game. they've been very good so far, leading 12-0. The South has really tried. They've had some big defensive stops in the second half. But the, the North is bigger and more physical and to this point has executed a little bit better. Vasquez, the quarterback. And a reverse. And with the football, the guy who scored the touchdown earlier, Borjas. And he moves the chains with a first down run. Nice tackle by Houston Brown. That looked like that was going to be a long gain. And Houston Brown, out of the Lancaster Jets, makes the tackle. But he got there a little bit late, and Borjas picked up the first down to the 46-yard line. We go inside of nine minutes to play. It looks great for the North if they can uh, you know, get a couple more first downs here. Not going to be a whole lot of time left for the South. They're down two touchdowns. So if you're the South, you want to – Cause some havoc, maybe force a turnover. Ball sitting at the 46 yard line. North taking its time. In fact, you see that the quarterback counts up the players, making sure that he has the right number out there. And that, of course, is Vasquez. And they're confused, and we're going to get a timeout. Don't want to force a turnover. 8.23 left in the game. 12 nothing North has it. We'll call a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Let's see what North first can down. do here after the timeout. They have a first down. They give it to Thompson. Breaks a tackle. DeLon Thompson goes into South Territory and pile drives to the 48-yard line. Yeah, nice inside we trap. Nice run. Six yards. Southside defenders. Well, in you got tackle. Thompson and Williams. On 24, you have some players who can really run the football here for the North. And that offensive line has done the job. It did, and it looks like on that last play, it was Anthony Tarabian on the tackle. Thompson again giving ground, weaving, breaking tackles. He has a first down. DeLon Thompson battling inside the 40-yard line. That tackle was initiated. Dante Russell slowed him up. But what an effort. Again by number 24, DeLon Thompson. Thompson I'm going to tell you right now, if it wasn't for Dante Russell, 
I think that Delon Thompson might have two touchdowns right now, but Dante Russell's ability to run sideline to sideline and make tackles have saved, you know, the South at least two touchdowns today. 7.20 to play. Clock a big friend of the North with a 12-0 lead. They're driving, and they are in a very good position to win this Bantam All-Star game. These are 10-year-olds. They don't play like 10, do they? No. Here's a pass to the sideline. It's a pretty good hit over there. Good catch, however, by Borjas. We know he's reliable. He caught the score early in the game. Sure tackling by the South. Their defense has really played well today. Yeah, I think that was Luke Madison of the Santa Clarita Blackhawks. I mean, new, <laughs> the notes that we got, numerous tackles, stay home, and that he did. Because if he doesn't make that tackle, he's up the sideline. Fabulous tackle by Luke Madison. Jonathan Borges was the recipient of that pass. One thing that Borjas was able to do is he stayed in bounds, and that keeps the clock going. Side Remember, that's a friend the of the North. Not a 6.20 left in the game, and they're in great shape. They're going to throw it again if they can. Here's one downfield, and it's caught. And there he goes again, Jonathan Borjas. Jonathan Borges. And Borjas inside the 10 at the five-yard line. It's first and goal north. Tough catch. Great throw by Anthony Vasquez. I mean, that was not an easy catch. Into the wind. Borjas twisting the body, controlling the body. Gets down to inside. Looks like just outside of the five. Six-yard line. Jared Giles saved the touchdown. Well, the North throwing the football here with the lead. That's a quarterback improvising beautifully and stumbling down near the goal line, Jonathan Vasquez. That pump fake had those defenders back on their heels. Yeah, nice pressure, pressure by Austin Jane. Uh, to get Vasquez out of the, you know, out of the pocket. Get down to the two-yard line. I got a shout-out to Larry Avila. Shoot the gap and be an animal. 5.15 left. So it's a time-consuming drive for the North. The leading 12 nothing and about to score again. They have the physical presence of Khalil Pert in that backfield, number 20. Also, Elijah Owens, who scored a touchdown. They're a little confused. They'll take a timeout. 5.05 to play in the ballgame. The North in great shape, leading 12-0. North trying to score here and ice this football game. Vasquez, the quarterback, calling his own number. They'll unpile him. It's a touchdown for Jonathan Vasquez. So Vasquez, who threw one to start the game, now able to follow his offensive line into the end zone, and the lead is 18 to nothing for the North. Yeah, uh, Vasquez has his imprints all over this game, especially down near the red zone. Excellent job, and that looks like at 457, based upon what we've seen so far, you know, you never say it's over, but it looks like it's over. Yeah, that Set one the two was the clincher. They're going to try to get the two here. Sherrard's in at quarterback. And we're finally going to have a two-point make. We hadn't had one all day long. And Anthony Viha found running room and takes it in for a two-point conversion. Left in the game. So with 4.57 left, put eight more on the board. It went from 12-0 to 20-0 for the North. This is the Bantam League PYFL All-Star Game. Kick is away. Low to the ground. And that's what is known as smart football. Just kneel on it. Don't jeopardize anything. It's exactly what Brandon Number Hamilton nine, did. Nine of the Lancaster Jets, Brandon Hamilton. It is an all-star game, so, you know, sometimes we get caught up with the wins and the losses, and the North's going to win it, but it's about individual performance. Still, there's opportunity 
for the Southern Stars to make a play. Let's see if they can make one. Got number five on the field, Jared Giles. He's been really good today, running back for the South out of Highland. Very fast, strong, and a smart runner. He's made some plays. Let's see if he can break one. Well, he's going to come off the field and talk to the coaching staff. They're confused whether Giles should stay on the field or Dante Russell. Now, Russell's come off, and Giles is now going to stay in. We're going to pick an MVP for both sides today. It's not easy. The wealth has been spread around, certainly, for the North. And we'll see in the last 420 who distinguishes themselves from the South. They just haven't been able to move that defensive front out of there. That was a big hit by Solis, Antonio Solis. He wears number 48 for the North. Well, it looks like they got Ja'Cory Dallas of the Burbank Black in the backfield playing fullback, which I think is an interesting move. It's just a little late today. And I think that I would have gone with Ja'Cory Dallas in the backfield at fullback, where he is, and I'd be trying to give the ball to Jared Giles, Dante Russell, and Tajeen Brown. Well, Stuthers is going to hand off to the Burley fullback. That is Dallas, Ja'Cory Dallas. And number 20. He puts his uh, imprint in on this football game. Nice run by Dallas. Yeah, no, I, that's what I thought. I mean, going against the big physical front that the North has, I think you got to, you know, use number 20 in the fullback and, you know, try to run the ball with, with a fullback blocking. Third down and five. Stuthers to the 40, gets one. It'll bring up a fourth down. 2.50 to play. And this, this game is moving quickly. It's going to be a win for the North. The only suspense here is can the South from the Campbell family. score? Can they get off the schneid against that terrific defense of the Northern Stars? Yeah, well, we did get off the schneid. We finally got an extra point. So that's one of the schneids that we got off. In two games, that was the first make, either kicking or running or passing on conversions. There's a throw that's up for grabs and picked off. And Dickey has it. Kenner Dickey of the Agura Chargers. Yeah, we saw earlier he had a nice tackle on an earlier pass, and there he took advantage of a throw, thrown pass, interception, and it looks like the North team might have another opportunity to score. How about the cover skills of Dickey? He's been great in that deep secondary today, and Kenner makes another big play. He had multiple interceptions and pass breakups during the regular season, and he's showing that kind of skill today in this All-Star game. Yeah, that's why, they, that's why he's out there, and, and even better, like you said earlier, coming back from injury and being able to participate in the All-Star game and not only participate but contribute is running with a minute 55 to play. We'll see how aggressive the North stays. And they will stay aggressive again. It is an all-star game. Sherrard improvising, and he's tackled for a loss. Zaya so couldn't get loose. Great defensive play. Trajan Hurry from the Lancaster Jets got that there. That tackle in the backfield was made by number 12, Malik Williams of the Palmdale Falcons. Treshawn Hurry on the sack right there of Isaiah Sherrard. Nice play by Treshawn. Okay. I'm going to make it. Caleb Barajas. And, and the Kay clock somebody. is Don't running. The syrup. That's what mom said. Minute 10 to go. North has all the points they Shout need. Elijah Owens. Quarterback Isaiah Sherrard in, and he's going to try to throw it here, but he's being pursued. Sherrard to the sideline, throws a beautiful aerial, coming back to try to help him and make the grab. Was Vasquez. 
Boy, Sherrard did a nice job of prolonging the play. He bought a lot of extra time there. A lot of extra time, and got uh, they got a personal foul on the sideline, so it's going to give them an extra 15 yards. You know, 50 seconds to go. I got a shout and, out. and even though it's an all-star I game, media. I think if you're the opposing coach, you got to understand that to you got to hope work, and expect that they're going to try to score because it's an all-star game. I wouldn't be mad if I was on the sideline. Typically in these games, you would just take a knee. But being an all-star, these kids, everybody wants to score. So let's hopefully see if we can get a play. And if and if he passes, that's an opportunity for you to get an interception. So this is an all-star game. Trying to score right now is not upstaging someone. No, it's a little bit different. It's not a regular season game. And, again, it's about the kids making plays and giving them an opportunity. And uh, Sherrard, again, with his ability to get outside of containment, prolong that play and made something happen. And Sherrard, again, is shoveling that one forward. Via. Got my final shout out. Clock continues to run with 30 seconds after the Via catch. Goes to Jacob Conahan. See if they run another play. They don't have to. They don't have to try another one. Down to 15 seconds left. I don't know that they want to run another play. I think they're content with the victory, although. Sherrard has come out there with eight seconds, and now he says, guys, let's try to get one play in. Five seconds. This will be the final snap, and they do indeed get it off, and here comes Sherrard trying to do his thing. He's running to the near side. Not going to get to the end zone. A beautiful run down to the 13-yard line for Isaiah Sherrard, and it is over. It's a 20-0 victory for the North. Yes, score. Terrific performance by the North. Yeah, beautiful play by the North. Physical, shut out, ran the ball very hard. Great game on both sides. Good effort on both sides. Let's meet our MVPs from the North and the South. Thanks, Randy. I'm standing here with Jared Giles, our All-Star Game MVP. Jared, we're presenting you with this Super Bowl hat to congratulate you on today's victory. Congratulations. So what did you do to, to have your team be successful today? Well, I just told my team to just go for it and block and, yeah, I just, yeah. What did your coach do to make you successful today? He just he just put me in. Just I just ran the ball hard. That's it. What's it like to play with all these amazing all-star players? And you're the MVP. It's pretty tough. Really tough, but it's, it's fun. Do you hope to be playing on a Sunday one day? Yes, I do. Well, congratulations. Good job. I'm standing here with Jonathan Vasquez, MVP for the Palmdale North team. Jonathan, we're presenting you with this Super Bowl hat to congratulate you on the victory. You were just chosen MVP of today's game. How do you feel about that? Um, good. What did you do to help your team win today? Um, throw touchdown passes and get a couple swats down for defense. Did your coach tell you anything specific to make you successful today? Um, just play hard and play your game like you usually do. And what's it like playing with all these amazing all-star players and you're the MVP of today's game? Uh... Does it feel awesome? Well, congratulations. You did really great today. Thank you. Hi, Randy. I'm standing here with Mike Sherrard, 10-year NFL veteran. Mike, your son Isaiah is playing in today, was playing in today's game. How important is it for you to see him play in the PYFL? You know, I'm really happy for him and all his teammates, uh, the Newberry Park Steelers. Great accomplishment. I'm happy that they won this game, and he's very excited. Now, you're a local. You're a California native. Did you play in the Pee Wee League just like the PYFL? Or? You know, I didn't start playing until I was in the sixth grade, so these kids are maybe a little bit younger. Uh, but it was a great uh, building blocks for me in terms of learning teamwork, hard work, uh, discipline. So it, it was really great for me. How do you see that leagues like this foster success in the future? Well, I think this teamwork and, and working hard and especially football is a game where everyone has to work together and so you learn it at an early age here. And you know it's amazing playing with all these, these all-star kids they don't know each other before you know this week this, they only had one week to practice what do you think that says about these 10 year old 11 year old players that they can congregate and be so successful just within a week? You know I give a lot of credit to the coaches of putting it all together and making the terminology easy enough the kids can understand it but it's a great opportunity for kids to meet other kids that Usually the rival now, your teammates together, all for one cause. So it's tremendous. 
So you're a UCLA Bruin, just like myself, and uh, you know, your son plays for the PYFL. Do you hope that he stays local, you know, maybe plays college ball with the UCLA Bruins? Or? Well, I mean, I, I brainwashed him, so he's a Bruin right now. So he hates USC, loves the Bruins, so hopefully that continues. That sounds like some great parenting from Mike Sherrard. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Shauna, for uh, the introduction of those fine MVPs. A final thought. I have no final thought. You've said it all for me. You've done a great job today. And Shauna, too bad about UCLA, too. Oh, come on. That's Toy Cook. All right, that's going to wrap it up. For Shauna and Toy, I'm Randy. Final score is the North 20. The South is shut out. 20 to nothing for the North in our Bantam League PYFL All-Star Game. So long, everybody. <laughs>